أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد رسوله. That is, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I further bear witness that Muhammad, peace and prayers and blessings be upon him, was the last and final messenger and, and prophet of Allah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, all praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. God is greater. God is greater, God is greater. God is greater than anything we can possibly think of, anything we can see, anything we can feel, perceive, uh, 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 come in, in any possible thought or fashion or anything in the world, God is greater and beyond the world, right? In our thoughts, in our actions, in what we think may be, may be possible, what we think may not be. God is greater than anything that can be conceived. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater. And we know this, of course, by the magnificent signs that he shows us on a daily basis throughout lifespans, throughout our day, our lives, throughout history, you know, uh, uh, biologically, psychologically, physiologically. Um, Allah shows us signs consistently over and over and over to remind us of his greatness, to remind us of the need for us to submit to his, his will. And the submission of his will is success for us. It is, it, it is a win for us to submit to his will. One of the signs, one possible sign would be, one of the signs would be that Allah has created everything in stages, right? Everything is done in stages. You look at a, a plant, when you plant a seed, it doesn't go from seed to fruit. There are stages. There are stages that got that seed to be in the seed. And then there are stages in which the seed has to go into the earth and to absorb the nutrition and the nutrients and, and, and the water that comes down. And then there is a stage of small little growth where it becomes this small little sprout of a plant, not strong enough quite to handle itself or carry a fruit, but just strong enough to reach out its limbs or its, its leaves and collect that sunlight, right? To do that photosynthesis. Um, and then it becomes the next stage where it becomes this strong plant, broad, strong, ready to actually produce, but not quite there at the production point. And then another stage is when it actually can produce and it starts producing fruit, starting with a flower, just a flower to assist in that production, right? And then it actually starts producing those fruits. And that fruit becomes fruit and then it starts over to the other stage. So Allah creates this cycle and he creates life and he creates stages for everything. Because if we, you know, and what we think of a lot of times when we start thinking about miracles, right? We're looking at things without looking at the stages, right? We're looking for instantaneous, miraculously, that's really almost uh, synonymous, right? Instantaneous, uh, uh, something coming into play instantaneously. Im uh, um, immediately coming into play. But we forget, because we're looking for miracles, that even within the stages, there are miracles, right? So sometimes we have to take a step back and look at the stages in order to appreciate the miracles that are already there in front of our face. So Allah gives us these signs and these miracles and these stages for us to submit and understand how life works and to understand that he is in full control and to understand the need of our submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. So, alhamdulillah, I plan on being brief. Uh, uh, I want to start with a concept that is, I, I, I'm, that's always mentioned. I mention it a lot. The basic concept, Islam is simple, right? It's a simple, easy religion, right? And it can be complicated. We can make it complex. But initially, it was made to be simple and easy. And I'm going to read a hadith here. Um, didn't have time to print it, so it's on my computer. Hold on one second. Okay, this hadith 
somehow something is raised. This hadith um, uh, is recorded by Muslim, um, and part of it is erased. So I'm going to read. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase the part that's been erased. Uh, so basically, there was a, a Sahaba came and talked to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and he said, "Tell me something, um, something that." No one else but you can tell me that I can't ask anyone else further out, outside of that. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said to him, he said, say, I have faith and thereafter be steadfast or be upright, right? So the Prophet gave him a very, I mean, as short of a uh, 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 definition for Islam as he could. <laughs> something that only the prophet could deliver, right? And so the prophet has been dropping these little jewels quite often. If you look through history, you will see, and through the pro history of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, you'll see him giving language of simplicity, nothing complex. And when things get complex, you'll see him try to shy away from that. He'll, you know, uh, just, just, just be upright, you know, just, just, just worship Allah, worship Allah alone. So when we look at this, it says, say, I believe in Allah. I say, I have faith, amen, in Allah. And that simple term, we can actually break that, that, that one piece down into something extremely complex, which there is no problem with that, right? It's okay we're getting into the complexities. So I'm going to try to break it down just a little bit. I don't want to go too complex, but this simple line, say, I have faith in Allah, and then remain upright, or some say steadfast. As a matter of fact, the, um, the actual word is um, istikama. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, istikama. And it's translated um, as uprightness, correctness, integrity, soundness, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it is also used in the word uh, karma, meaning to rise, uh, to stand up right. And from this word, we, we derive words like um, uh, uh, sirata mustaqim, mustaqim, comes from there, the straight path, right? So all of those, I just gave you a bunch of definitions of one word, right? But let's just take the, the understanding of being upright, right? The understanding of being straight, right? But before we do that, let's go back and talk about faith. And I can talk, <laughs> we know that there have been series of, of, of volumes of books written about faith, right? Volumes and volumes of written about faith. But if we wanna keep the ideal simple, we'll say that faith is the, uh, um, so is the belief in Allah, right? The belief, like we were talking, that Allah exists. The belief that Allah is the almighty, the powerful, and he is who we say he is. And we can break faith down. So you have faith in Allah. You have faith in his word, in his book, in his system. You have faith in, in, in the creation that he has created to do what it is supposed to do. So we can be simple. We can make it complicated, but let's just say it's mean faith. Have faith in Allah. The other part, we may remain up stand, uh, um, steadfast. Before we go into that, he says, say, so this is not only just having the faith, but to ver vo ver um, vocalize it, right? To speak it out, to say, I believe in Allah. La ilaha illallah. That I, I, I believe in Allah, that I have faith in Allah. So we can even get deeper into that, right? The psychology behind verbalizing words and what words do when they come back to us and how they go out into the world and affect other people around us, right? So say that you have faith so you can hear it and others can hear it, proclaim, right? Just like what the prophet was told to you, Ikra, proclaim, say what, that you have faith in Allah, that you have faith. And then thereafter, be upright, be straight, stand upright, stand erect, do what man was meant to do. A man and woman, we weren't meant to go down as uh, Imam Muhammad taught, we're not meant to be dogs, right? We don't go down on all fours. We don't, we don't, we don't slide and sliver, you know, like a snake. We have limbs, yes, we have four limbs, but we were meant to stand erect 
And a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, if we don't, then we'll have issues. If we don't stand straight up with our spine, we'll have all kind of organ, organ issues, right? We'll have issues with the, uh, the flow of, uh, of energy and blood to our brain. We'll have issues with how our muscles develop. So with the blood, flow of blood, we'll have thinking issues, perception issues, if we don't learn to stand upright. So just physically standing upright, there are lots of benefits in it, right? Just physically. But Allah was saying, stand upright, meaning that all of those that, that be up, be steadfast, stand upright. We even have it in our speech, you know, you straight, right? That's old school. I don't know if I'm cutting myself off, but I know in my generation, you straight? Yeah, I'm straight. What does that mean? Are you good, right? So we, we, you know, the terminology we use, we straight, that means that, you know, you were good. That means that you were doing good. You were okay. But even going deeper into what good means that, you know, we're not going to go down that route. <laughs> That's talking about being simple. And this is my point here, right? So you straight? Yeah, I'm straight, right? Or straight up. That means I'm telling the truth. This, there is no lie in this. That's straight up. I'm straight up though, you know, this is our language, right? This is some of our language. Or be straight with me, you know? What does that mean? Be straight with me. Give it to me direct, right? Don't tell me no, tr no lies. Don't cover it up. Don't, don't mix it up. Give it to me as it is, as it was meant to be given, you know? Um, and then, of course, uh, 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 the, the, I'm missing that, the one last terminology. We'll leave it alone. So these, these are terminologies that we use to understand what straight means. There it is. So then, of course, the other mathematical uh, relationship, what is a straight line, right? The straight line is a, the most, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the fastest path from one point to another. The, the shortest path. I got some mathematicians in the house. The shortest path from one point to another, right? And what does Allah say in, in, in our fatia? If then that's serata mustaki, you know, keep us, show us the straight path, right? Not the path all over the place. And it's so funny, you know, we we uh, a lot of times when we are so close to what it is that we're doing, we think that we're going a straight path, but we think we're going to the fastest route, but it's not always the fastest route. Because we see, you know, we got traffic here, you're driving in line in, 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 in the city of Chicago, and you get caught in some traffic, and you're like, man, this is, you know, sometimes we don't listen to the signs. We'll even have, um, uh, um, we'll have our devices that tell us this is the fastest path, right? This is the fastest path that you can see. I'm pretty sure I can I cut across here. I jump in front of this guy, take a left on this. I take this side street. I go left or right. You know, and I, our minds get to thinking. And a lot of times, one, we may very well get there faster, cutting corners. But two, even if we do, we put ourselves at all kinds of risk, right? We put ourselves in the risk of having an accident, at the risk of losing more time. You know, at, it, it's, it just makes it more convoluted. So. We want to, in, in life, we want to keep that straight path, especially knowing that we're not talking about, um, we're not talking about a, 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 a Google, right, telling us what to do. We're talking about a law that's giving us what the straight line is. This is the straight path. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said, say, I have faith, speak it out, I have faith, and then thereafter, be upright, be straight. Be steadfast, simple, right? Real simple, but it can be made complex, right? So we wanna make sure that we are sticking to the understanding of the simplicity of what has been given to us and not get caught up into the complexities or sometimes into the details, into the overly, overly, over, get overly given details. I'll give you another example. When you are uh, at war, right? When you are at war, um, if you were to respond, if a soldier is on, on the ground and he sees 
in front of him, that there's a man charging him, right? Or he sees, he can see from his perspective, from his vision, he sees a hundred, whatever thousand people coming towards him, right? And he's got 200,000 people. And from his perspective, right? He sees those people, he said, we can take them. We can take these people. And so his thought, his fashioning of it, you know, he wants to just go ahead and, and, and get, let's, let's take it, let's get it out the way. But in Islam, Allah asks us for, to take a step back, right? So imagine that we were able to get a drone, right? To go up in the air and fly and see the entire perspective. Or if we had, uh, 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 what do you call it? Air control, right? We have command control who has got communication going on with air control, with the satellites. So we got a better perspective than you do immediately sitting there on the ground. So when the satellite, go, when, when the, uh, uh, the, the drone goes up, he sees 100,000 men, but then he sees 500,000 more men behind him. He sees tanks and, and ships and, and, you know, and then he sees that the ground gets lower when you, when you get to them. So by the time, uh, calculating the distance, by the time you get there, you'll be on lower ground. So you won't have the advantage. So if that soldier just went with his perspective and said, man, this is quick, fast. We can get this battle over it right now. Let's run over there and get it without thinking about taking the perspective of a faraway view, a broader perspective, a bigger understanding of what's going on, what's taking place there, and accepting the intelligence that is being given him. Then he's running and heading and, and leading 200,000 people into slaughter. He's leading 200,000 people, 200,000 and more, including himself, into slaughter. So that is going without taking a broader perspective. So when we, if, if he were to take the intelligence that was given him, if he were to take the broader perspective, he would know, Olaf, we're sending troops in with you. Matter of fact, we're going to send the, uh, the uh, air command in and they're going to give, you don't even have to fight, you know, because it's all, this in the plan. There is somebody who has a broader perspective, a broader understanding of what's going on. There is somebody who has connections, right, with everything that sees what's going on. So when, when we take a step back, I know it sounds like it gets complicated, but actually taking a step back makes things simple. You don't have to worry about uh, a decision where you might have to, you, you know, am, am I right? Do I know what's going on behind this person? You know, how comp you know uh, how many feet and all this. You take a step back, you're actually visualizing the bigger picture. So let me give you another example. When you are evaluating or trying to make a decision on something, um, uh, that is uh, 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 with only one perception, then you are, you might be making it simple in your head, but you're making it way more complicated because you are not going directly to the issue. You might be dealing with just the symptom or you might be dealing with just that perception. <laughs> so Islam wants us to keep it simple and to keep it complicated. Did I just make it more complicated? <laughs> what do I mean by this? So what do I mean? What I mean is that complication, right? It may, it, 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 it can lead, uh, simplicity can lead to complication. And that is my point in talking about that one statement, how we can take that one statement and make it way complicated. We can derive all kinds of, 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 of understandings from a man and, and from uh, what it means to be upright, to be steadfast. We can uh, derive all kinds of understandings and, and it's good. It could develop us in certain ways, but the issue comes when we get lost in that convolution and, and when we get lost in all of the details and we forget the picture from what a distance, the perspective. We forget the perspective of the simple 
believe in a lie and stand up right. I'm so busy trying to figure out how I can get my body to, uh, to believe in a lie. Each fingertip, it's got to believe in a lie. Each thread, each hair, it's got to submit wholeheartedly. And I'm so busy trying to make sure that that is what I'm doing, that sometimes we forget the big picture. We forget the big cause. We forget, uh, uh, and we get caught up in, in, our, in, in, in the complexities. So there is a place for understanding. Like we said, there are stages in life. There are stages. Humans have stages. We start out as a child. We start out um, and we, we have limitations there. Then we go into uh, toddlers and then we go into, you know, adolescents and young adults and adults and, and we just keep growing and we have stages. And within those stages are levels of understanding. And if you're a baby and you decide that you're just gonna jump up and consume, you know, a baby who don't have teeth, you're gonna eat steak you're gonna run into problems. So a lot of times we make it more complex, complex by jumping stages, by trying to jump and have those miracles happen, right? Without going through the procedure and the stages that are necessary. And even at the high stage, we have to remember the point. So sometimes we'll be uh, eating steak and we understand that our body can eat steak and we're eating steak and we'll be so busy eating so complex, making sure that that steak is right, chopping it up, finding, and, you know, making sure that we eat different things. We forgot the reason that we're eating. You know, we've forgotten that we're consuming so that we can grow and that what we eat is important because those nutrients, we forget those things. So let us um, be sure that we always go back to the simplicity of what um, Islam is based off of Quran, based off of what Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And let us feel comfortable enough to go and delve into the understanding of, uh, 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 of, of the, uh, the, the ideologies or the concepts or of Islam, but let's not go so far that we lose sight of what the real mission is, that we lose sight of the purpose behind what it is that we're doing. So with that, inshallah, I'm going to close out this section. Rabbana atayna fa dunya hasanatan wa lakintu. Hasanatan wa kina adabina. Amen. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, all praises due to Allah, praises due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. So Allah has given us the religion easy, right? There's another hadith that says, um, reported by Abu Huraira, and it says, verily, the religion is easy, and no one burdens himself in religion, but that it overwhelms him. Follow the right course, seek closeness to Allah, Give glad tidings and seek help for worship in the morning and evening and in part of the night. And this was related, recorded by Buk uh, Bukhari. So there are more. And, um, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessed be upon him. Uh, and I'm going to summarize this one is uh, when the angel Gabriel came and, and taught him the religion, right? Taught those who were around him. He came out of the desert clean and untouched, you know, dark hair, white you know, no dust on him and came and touched the prophet's knees and, you know, gave him the five pillars, you know, uh, and, and just asked him salt. But the conversation was so short and simple that at the end of it, he said, do you know who that was? And they said, who? That was Gabriel. And he came to teach you your religion. In a, in a matter of, I don't know, five sentences, he came to teach you your religion. So we have to be sure that we come back to our, to what the very beginning, what it is that we are here to do, that our job, it can come 
overly complicated at times. As we grow, when we come to those stages of adulthood and understanding and level and and uh, the the level of understanding that we come to, things can get really really complex. We can be so involved in everything that's going on in the world, in in politics, in in in, in what's going on with my neighbor, and, and trying so hard to manage everything with our own hands and our own limited perspective, right? that we forget what our job is. Our job is to do just what Prophet Muhammad told us to do, to believe in Allah on as many levels as you wish, as many levels as you can, and then to be upright thereafter. That means to be good, to be straight, to follow the straight path consistently. Yes, the straight path may feel uncomfortable at times, right? Because if you're thinking of it in the baby mindset, as soon as you get to some kind of uh, thorn in the road or you get to something that is uncomfortable, you're ready to turn off and find a different route, right? This ain't working out for me. But if you go back, you are allowed to see the view, you know, the aerial view, to see the lifespan and beyond life, right? Then you are aware, one, if this is Allah's path, that thorn means nothing to me because I'm going, I'm reaching my destination in the shortest amount of time, in the best way. I'm going right the direction in which Allah has me to go. So that thorn is just part of, part of that process, right? And some people be like, oh, that thorn is nothing. That, as a fact, that thorn is good because that means I know I'm on the right path, you know? You know the, the terminology they say, yeah, well, you know you're doing good when you get a bunch of haters, right? People start throwing shade on you and getting mad at you. And I'm telling the Muslim this, right? When people start getting upset with you living your right life, right, has nothing to do with that, right? So I want to add one last piece in the Quran. And this is Surah Hijra. The Rocky Chair tra uh, track, excuse me. Just going to read the first three ayats, inshallah. Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Alif Lam Ra. These are the ayat of revelation of a Quran that makes things clear. Again and again will those who disbelieve wish that they had bowed in Allah's will in Islam. Leave them alone to enjoy the good things of this life and to please themselves. Let false hope amuse them. Soon will knowledge undeceive them. Sabiq Allah, I think. Surely Allah speaks the truth. So in the complications of the world, in the complications of what society throws at us, we sometimes find ourselves trying to save everybody, right? Trying to correct every vocal statement that has ever been put out there um, immediately, right? Trying to uh, uh, join every uh, uh, every uh, every venture that is out there um, that is dealing with distress, right? We're taking on all of these different things, and we're so busy trying to say, "Hey, this dude is over here trying to kill us," and you know their intentions are wrong. They have set up structures and systems that are going to collapse on us. And we get, and, and again, like I said, there's nothing wrong with understanding that, but we get so caught up in it that we forget the basics, that we forget about home, that we forget about, what, what were you doing? I, you forget about your five prayers. You forget about what is necessary to keep you straight, right? And that is what Allah was saying in that, I, from, that's what I gathered in that, leave them alone. These people, they crazy. All you can do is share out loud your faith, right? And what does that mean? Speak it out. Yes, when something is brought up, give your opinion. As a Muslim, share the best direction. Live it out. That means everyday life, you are being a Muslim. You are doing what Muslims do. You are following the creed and the code of a Muslim. And then, you know, thereafter be upright. When, that means that when you are, once you've spoken out, you've done that, you, you're living that, 
when you fall off, when you make a mistake, you know, refocus yourself, get yourself back on track. At all times, remember that you are supposed to be upright. So many times we get caught up in the fanatics, in the uh, what, what people are doing, in, in the politics, in all of what's thrown at us in the news, and we want to just grab a whole hand. In a sense, that is shaitan trying to distract us from what we need to do. What am I saying? We need to be building our community. We need to be building ourselves, building our own faith. We need to be building our community. We need to be working with our children. We need to be working with our families. And we need to be speaking out, yes, but we don't need to run out and grab every cause. We don't need to extend our, overextend ourselves so that we are not effective at home. Because that effectiveness will eventually seep out and influence the whole world. We got to allow our air command, our air control, which is a loss upon what to Allah, right? We got to allow the intelligence, the, the, the intelligence in the sky to be able to see all of that and handle those things, right? Things get solved naturally, right? But only if individuals do what they're supposed to do. Not only if individuals stay focused on their basic mission. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessed be upon him, addressed a lot of concerns, but he kept a regiment that was, I mean, a simple regiment. Um, I was reading, and I'm gonna end with this inshallah. I was reading, um, I wanted to bring it, but you know, it, I'm just gonna simplify it. It was a, an article that talked about the daily life of the prophet, peace and blessed be upon him. And if you looked at his daily life, there was a lot of talking, right? Because he was the prophet. He was delivering a message. But most of, his most of his life was prayer. He spent a great deal, and it was organized around prayer. He got up in the morning, he made salat, right? Before he even went to, uh, 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 to prayer, he made his sunnah in the house, right, personally. And then he got up, and he went to prayer, and he made salat. And then he talked to the people. And then they, they made dua. And then he went on to live his life and move along. And then, but even throughout it, unless there was war going on, right? Immediate war. His daily life was about sharing, proclaiming the message. And then you see the times in which he visited his family, his engagement with his family. In the evening, in the afternoon, he went home to, he, he spent the time to, uh, with his wives. He had different wives, so he went to different homes. And he talked to them, he shared. We don't want to get to a point where we are fighting this battle, but we forget the importance of the simplicity of this deen, which is to uplift individuals, starting with ourselves, and then, of course, with our families and with our immediate community. So let's let's let us um, again a, a bit of there are times when we do have to get complex, but the ideal is not to let go of the sim simple understanding of Islam. The basic la ilaha illallah. Because if nothing, and, and, and when, when you go way out there and you start getting into different arguments like, should critical theory be, you know, taught in, in schools? Or should, you know, uh, uh, what's going on with all of these? It, I don't want to get to, it, it becomes, it can become a hot mess, right? We can talk about that. But if I'm so busy talking about that, and it doesn't line up with la ilaha illallah, and it stops me from doing my basics, right? Then I have allowed that to become a distraction and to become something that's almost anti-Islam, right? If I'm so busy in my Islam that I'm making an argument about, you know, uh, or I, I'm so focused on what foot that I'm stepping into the bathroom, which has its pretense, it has its, its benefit, but so much so that I've forgotten about the importance of wudu, or I've forgotten about the prayer that I'm going in the bathroom to make wudu about because I'm so involved in that detail that I'm allowing it to take me off of my track. No matter what stage we are at, no matter how much we are developing, how much study we are, have, how much we are trying to save all the, uh, compete and fight all the atrocities in the world, let us remember to go back to the basics. Let us remember to go back to la ilaha illallah, to have faith in Allah and to thereafter be upright. Let us all make, let us make sure that no matter how far we go out there, that we return to that and that that 
is the guidance for everything that we do. So inshallah, uh, Allah will bless us with uh, the understanding, always to keep that understanding simple. Um, and when we go out into those uh, things that can be complex, to remember the, uh, the source of it, remember the mission behind it, and to stay the course, to be upright. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wal asr. In al insan ala fi kusr. Illa ladina amanu wa amanu sawli hati wa tawa sawli hak wa tawa sawli sabr. Sadaqallahu alayhi wa sallam. Come to slap.